Indigenous artist Norval Morisot was known for many things. His beautiful artwork, founding the Woodland School of Canadian Art Gallery exhibitions around the world, and also, unfortunately, for being the target of organized art fraud. Last week, Thunder Bay Police and OPP announced they'd charged eight people and seized more than 1,000 paintings after an investigation into fraudulent Norval Morisot artwork. Five of the accused are from Thunder Bay. To find out more, we're joined now by Thunder Bay Police Detective Sergeant Jason Ryback, who was one of the primary investigators. Detective Sergeant Ryback, good morning. Good morning, Mary Jean. So let's start at the beginning. What prompted this investigation? So back in uh, 2019, I was uh, looking at the uh, murder of Scott Dove. And during that investigation, I was contacted by uh, his mom asking if I had seen the documentary, There Are No Fakes. I had not. And so I uh, proceeded to watch the documentary and through that learned of the art fraud that was going on in Thunder Bay and began looking into uh, into that issue. Uh, it quickly became evident uh, we were getting into something very large. Uh, it was the uh, members of the major crime unit who were working on it at the time. And uh, with the uh, senior leadership who was supportive of the investigation, we needed uh, to contact the OPP to come in and, and uh, work jointly on the investigation. So the the, the joining of, of you and OPP, what what was the plan there in terms of what the OPP could, could bring to the work you were already doing? So the OPP uh, provided a case manager, um, Detective Inspector Kevin Veyu. He oversaw the investigation. Uh, they, they assisted in providing resources. Uh, as it became large-scale and international in nature, we've traveled across uh, Canada, uh, worked with uh, the FBI in the U.S. at the beginning. And uh, they provided uh, a lot of assistance in uh, helping us navigate search warrants uh, with resources in southern Ontario mm-hmm. um, and officers across uh, the province when we may not have been able to travel. How did you go about <laughs> conducting this investigation? It sounds like it was just so much to be done um, in terms of you know interviews and, like you say, search warrants. And tell me a bit about that process and what involved Well, it was a systematic process. Um, The investigators assigned to it from Thunder Bay, we all have background in in homicide investigations. So we really looked at it from that standpoint. And um, one of the key things we did was we wanted to reconstruct Norvell's life. And so we reached out to people who were were with Norvell through uh, his painting history. Uh, including uh, two members, surviving members of the Indigenous Group of Seven. And we we learned how he painted, why he painted, what he did, what he didn't do. Uh, That was one component of it. The second component was obviously interviewing people involved uh, in the fraud. There were individuals who came forward who were involved in the creation. And then the third piece to that was... um, utilizing technology to today's standards from various agencies that uh, provided uh, forensic reports and evidence uh, to support our investigation. So how, what did you discover? How did this actual fraud work? Um, How were the paintings created, distributed? Uh, How did it happen? So I can't get into a lot of the nuances of it because it's before the courts, but in generalities, uh, we learned that in 1996, David Voss uh, was the architect of the uh, the whole scheme here in Thunder Bay, and he solicited a group of individuals to help him um, create the paintings. Um, he was involved in the distribution of the paintings to Southern Ontario. It ultimately got into the... Um, um, art galleries and then into um, auction houses down in Southern Ontario. And it's well documented uh, in 2002, I believe, is when the first problem started developing uh, in Ontario with fake paintings. Norval himself was alive during that period and was noting uh, through court affidavits uh, which paintings of his were fake. And there was a real pushback um, from a group of individuals who were trying to say that there was no problem with the fake paintings. And so... Once that happened, uh, Gary Lamont got involved and they started creating a a different style of painting and he was using uh, Indigenous artists Benjamin Morisot and Tim Tate who are are excellent painters in their own right and so the paintings became better, um, better quality paintings, a little bit harder to to recognize Mm -hmm. um, the paintings. But they were still unique in a sense. And so that continued on till around 2008. And then, uh, again, the controversy was, was well documented in the media and through the courts. There were some civil 
uh, litigation on on this issue. And a group out of southern Ontario uh, in 2008 began creating a third style of painting, which, um, again, they tried to frame it as the 1980s style of Norvell paintings. Mm. Uh, and so there's really three distinct groups. And as you get in longer in looking into this investigation, as I have, it becomes quite obvious which painting fits within each group mm-hmm. uh, just by looking at them and then looking at how Norvell's actually painted uh, his real paintings. Uh, the Thunder Bay Art Gallery was fantastic. Uh, they have, I think, the second largest collection of Norvell paintings in Canada. And so we certainly looked at a lot of the paintings that the art gallery has here. I've been to the uh, the Canadian uh, Art Gallery in Ottawa and a few others have uh, Hamilton provided great assistance, the Glenbow in Calgary, uh, the McMichael Institute, which have uh, great uh, collections of Norval Morrisel paintings. So that was a kind of the, the framework of the, the four stages of, of what we did. Wow. A lot of paintings seized. Uh, where were they seized from? We seized paintings all across uh, Ontario. We seized a large collection out in Calgary. Uh, the Calgary Police Service provided great assistance to us out there. We flew out uh, out west, executed a couple search warrants out there. I think we were around 1,200 paintings in total were seized. Uh, the vast majority were seized in Ontario. Uh, we seized hundreds in here in Thunder Bay. What did collectors, owners of these paintings, how did they react? What did they say when you show up and, and say, this is a fake, I'm taking it? Well, it wasn't, it wasn't <laughs> quite that simple. Um, you know, it was, it was an interesting investigation because there was a lot of, there were, we dealt with, with victims from, you know, the, the person who spent their last dollar on, on something for their retirement right up to, to, to billionaires who, mm-hmm. who had spent millions of dollars on collections. And so we, we had to engage uh, victim assistance uh, throughout this because some people, it devastated them. Sure. Um, there was a real, another faction to this, which a lot of, you know, a victimization of, of individuals uh, like Kevin Hearn, uh, Richie Sinclair, Gabe Vadis, who was Norvell's adopted son, the family members who were also victimized in the sense that they were trying to, to show that there was a problem with the paintings and were attacked uh, for that uh, view um, from groups that wanted to uh, say that there was no, no fakes. Uh, my goodness. Uh, and and you, before I let you go, you've said you are normally a homicide investigator. What was that like for you taking on a project so different from your day to day? It was uh, it was interesting. Uh, I worked with a, a great team of, of officers from the Thunder Bay Police. Uh, you know, I'm just fortunate enough to have been labeled the quote unquote the primary investigator. But I was only one member of a team of of dedicated officers um, who had a real passion for investigating this. You know, everything we investigate, we we investigate to the same standard. So it really was just another you know investigation where we we built it. We never left a, a rock. We turned over every rock. Um, to ensure that when we brought this case forward, we were confident in the evidence, we were confident in the investigation, um, and we're holding the people accountable. And when will this go to court? Do we know? I believe the first appearance is March 24th uh, here in Thunder Bay. There will also be uh, the, the GTA faction is appearing, I believe, in Bradford on the same date. Thank you so much for coming in and talking to us about it. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Mary Jean. That was Thunder Bay Police Detective Sergeant Jason Ryback.